we are really only given one body for our entire lives. So why do we treat it like shit when we go out to drink on the weekends, we put processed foods, fast foods into our bodies and essentially degrade the length of time that we can have this vessel, this body of ours. And that's why with Inside Tracker and their blood test, I wanted to find out, can I do a diagnostic? Can I figure out a science-based diet that's gonna help me live longer, help me be more productive, and help me feel more energized throughout the day? And in this video, I'm gonna share what Inside Tracker is and what my results and my experience with Inside Tracker was like. If you've seen Dr. Andrew Huberman talk about it on his podcast. I'm a big believer in getting blood work done. Inside Tracker does a terrific job of giving you a rationale for why you might want to consider doing more of this or less of that, ingesting more of this or less of that, as opposed to just telling you to do it, which as we know, never works. Other biohackers on Instagram ads, then you know that there's been a little bit of talk about Inside Tracker and their blood test. Use code Trevor for 20% off, helps the channel. What is Inside Tracker? It's kind of like Elizabeth Holmes and Theranos, except it actually works, and they're using technology that's available at this time. You have two options. You can either do an at-home blood test, where they'll ship you a mobile blood draw kit, and a phlebotomist will come to you, the person who extracts blood out of your veins, and they'll use that at-home kit to get some blood. Paperwork, the actual thing that the nurse will use, some more paperwork, and return shipping label. They will come do the blood draw and ship it back in this box. Option two is you can do an in-lab test. I went to a Quest Diagnostics. You walk into the lab, you make an appointment and they will do the blood draw. You give them your paperwork and then you head out. It's pretty simple. You give Inside Tracker your money, you give Inside Tracker your blood and they give you back a colorful dashboard that just looks really pretty. And in that colorful dashboard, you get actionable insights on how to change your behavior, lifestyle and your diet to live a better life. If you're trying to optimize your athletic performance, your mental performance, this is the test that you would really want to do. And there are competitors out there like Wellness FX and a few others. I'll put a screenshot up here of a comparison. I didn't try those. This just seemed to have an overall consensus online of what people like the most. This is the Inside Tracker app. They allow you to set your goals, whether it's overall health, endurance, lose fat, your inner age, metabolism, heart health, gut health, strength and power, stress, energy. I chose cognition, sleep, and immunity. Based on these goals and your blood tests, they're gonna give you recommendations on what to eat, how to eat, and how to change your lifestyle. Now it's great as I had a call with her dietitian, Michelle. Going through your blood work page, if that helps. And she walked me through my results and gave me some recommendations on what I need to do. For your sugar group and for your cholesterol group, I would say to start incorporating more fiber. It'll not only help your sugar group, your cholesterol group, but also your iron group. So I would say to incorporate some black beans. So if we go to the homepage of the app, you can see here, they'll give me a list of like tasks to do. These are kind of the lifestyle changes that the app is recommending based on my blood tests. I can go to you and then I can see my biomarkers that need work. So within the iron group, the biomarker that we care about the most is ferritin. Ferritin is that, is that storage form of iron. So it, it shows how much iron is available for your body. So that one's at 43. And so that one's a, a, a bit on the lower side. Um, it's not, I, I would say right now, it's not low enough to um, indicate that you should take an iron supplement, but it's something to keep in mind. And I would say, the best thing for you would be to create more iron rich foods. Okay, so creatine kinase is next. So that's just kind of a general indicator of your muscle health. Basically what that does, so basically when you work out, like when you do strenuous workouts, your body, like it leaks the damaged muscle cells into the bloodstream and that's part of the, the part of your training adaptation um, is clearing those cells and then building back up. So your level was just a bit above optimized. That can stay above optimized um, if you've, worked out, I would say in like the last, like a strenuous workout in the last five days. That sometimes can contribute to higher levels. All right, next up is vitamin B12. This one came back a bit above optimized as well. Since I realized that I have high vitamin B12 levels, I actually did look at my like protein powders. I was trying this vegan like all in one thing and I think it's made for people who are vegan. And if you look at the label right there, it says 600 milligrams, 25,000 of vitamin B12 percentage of daily dose. And then another thing I looked at is pre-workout. I started digging pre-workout because all these fitness influencers are doing it and if I wanna be a fitness influencer, I know I have to take pre-workout. Just kidding, for some reason, it kinda of works. I don't do it every day, but some days. This has a fifth of the uh, B12, but it has 100 micrograms, which is about 4,000% of your daily dose of vitamin B12. So those two things together actually were just excessive. Now I realize I need to either stop using that protein powder and pre-workout or just take it less often. You're still in the, in the normal range, so I wouldn't say there'd be like specific 
symptoms of it, but you know, a higher like higher levels of B12 can lead to more fatigue. Um, it can lead to skin rashes. One of the things that Michelle and I talked about was there's three main groups that I should focus on: my sugar group, cholesterol group, and my iron group. For your sugar group and for your cholesterol group, I would say to start incorporating more fiber. So that can be things like starting with oatmeal for breakfast and other whole grains. And then I would say also incorporating beans. It'll not only help your sugar group, your cholesterol group, but also your iron group. Now, as you can see, she did recommend getting oats. I will not lie, but I have become a huge fan of these like overnight oats. I'll just put milk and I pour the oats in and then the milk and just shake it up. And then the next morning it's ready to go and I can either drink it or scoop it out. This thing is literally so freaking easy and it tastes so good. I don't know what it is about oats. That's just like, I crave them now every single day. Essentially changing my diet. And then for iron, incorporating more shellfish, iron rich foods. What's neat is once I take the blood test, I get these recommendations on foods I should start eating more of. I can go ahead and tap view my history and we can see how my cholesterol is actually getting worse. So clearly I haven't been doing a good job of eating more beans and, and fiber foods. In my sugar group, it's essentially stayed the same. And if you look at my iron, it's telling me that I'm way off and I need to focus more on eating these diets and recommendations that Michelle gave me. One, for example, was my fasting glucose. It was relatively high when I did my initial test, but it looks like it's dropped to an optimized zone in my most recent test, which is really good news. I was also slightly deficient in magnesium and I started to supplement with more magnesium. So it looks like that score is increasing. That's a good sign for me to see. So basically magnesium is good because it basically it simulates the production of melatonin, which can help to st like to send you into that sleep-wake cycle. So that can help to improve sleep. But overall, there's three main factors that Michelle told me to focus on. It's food, sleep, and stress. A lot of the times, like a lot of these biomarkers are really impacted by stress and sleep. So making sure that I get good enough sleep, I minimize the stress impact throughout my day. It could be physical stress, emotional stress, mental stress. They all impact the body in the same type of way. And then my food groups, it's eating those fibers, getting my protein after workouts because my creatine kinase was a little bit high. Yo, farm raised Atlantic salmon filet. Avoiding vitamin B12 because I could be supplementing with too much, especially in like the protein shakes that I'm having. And then having better st stress and sleep because my free testosterone was a little bit low. But the things that did look good that were kind of common in other people was um, your liver enzymes look good. So your ALT and your AST, um, which are impacted by exercise, those two look good. Your GGT is more impacted by alcohol consumption and like over the counter medications, and that one looks good. Your vitamin D level looks good. You said you take a vitamin D supplement for that one? Yes. So why would you not just go to your doctor to get a blood test? Like when you get your blood work done there, do they tell you how to interpret it and like what to do next? Usually my doctor will be like, everything looks good. Okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> We'd say like the value of Inside Tracker is that we not only like do the blood work, but we tell you what to do next, basically, and try to give you good strategies on how to incorporate those. But then if you do have like past blood work from a doctor and uploading that is awesome because then you can like be able to compare different values over time. The biggest reason is you don't get a beautiful colorful dashboard, right? I love colors. If you don't get colors, what's the point? <laughs> Just kidding. But on a real note, what Inside Tracker does, is, as you can see, the red, is where you're at risk. If you're out in those zones, your doctor would say, hey, we need to take action. Inside Tracker takes those zones and creates an optimal zone. And that's based on your gender, your age, kind of your physical activity that you input into the app and they create this customized zone for you. Basically the way we look at it is if you are in this red zone, that's when we recommend that you speak to your doctor about your result. If you're in this orange, orange zone, this is borderline high. This would indicate that you, if you continue to do exactly what you're doing, you could potentially be in that high zone. The yellow zone is that normal zone. That's basically like if you were to get this test from your doctor, they would probably say that you're in like their normal zone that specific biomarker wouldn't necessarily be flagged when doctors create or like when they have these like consensus over this normal zone it's not exactly personalized to you based on your specific habits and like other components of your blood work it's more so like an average of the general population the value of inside tracker is these um personalized optimized zones so if you're someone who's trying to optimize their performance right physically or mentally this is where inside tracker is giving you a smaller set of bounds to focus on and then when you go to the doctor's office they'll just give you a paper with the name of the thing and then just numbers and kind of the overall general range for the average population whereas inside tracker is actually going to give me specific recommendations and when i say specific recommendations it's really based on my blood work so for example bump up your bean intake that was a big one it's going to show my blood markers and which ones are low and how bumping up my bean intake it's going to 
help improve these numbers over time. So it's gonna give me some lifestyle changes, like try a new yoga flow, some supplement changes, having more shellfish. You said be fishy. So diet changes. I think the real value add is the actual insights as well as the trends and the dashboard over time. So they incorporate all my data. What you can do is you can actually get this blood test from your doctor and then import the data into Insight Tracker as well. You can do a mix of both if you really want. That's kind of my biggest value add. And then in terms of activity, they do import your data from Fitbit or Garmin. I don't have either, which kind of sucks. I wish they pulled my data from Apple Health to really understand like how much Am I sleeping? What exercise am I doing? And that can help uh, fine tune their recommendations and actionable insights that they're giving me. One of the biggest recommendations that they said is uh, make sure to get this blood test done every three months because that'll help increase their revenue as a business and a company. And also it can help you as a person as well. But that was kind of the recommendation from Michelle was take the blood test every three months. Yeah, that gives like the biomarkers enough time to to move and see like how your uh, different actions are impacting your blood work. I think for me, this might be every six months or a year. If you're really trying to fine tune and optimize, then yes, every three months. I think especially for high intensity entrepreneurs or athletes at the elite level, this can be really critical to understand how does your diet and your lifestyle impact your performance. I think this is one of the small steps in, in the future for life tracking technology. We're gonna continue having devices and blood tests that can track how our lifestyle is changing over time and I think as we continue doing more and more of this, we'll be able to predict illnesses, prevent any kind of diseases that we might start to see in people. And I think this is gonna be honestly life-changing. So go get your blood test today. Inside Tracker is linked down below. Also, make sure to go watch my science-based tips for better sleep, link down below.